and accepted the invite. I can't see you in the studio, so you're not on Facebook. You are on IG. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Omola Raishal. I think we did the introduction already. Pardon me. I was just going to go straight to the session. Okay, do you want to do you want us to sit together at this rate? <laughs> Let, let's sit together. Do you want to come over? At least for Facebook's sake, and I know on, on Instagram we're okay. Where's your IG? Please bear with us. Uh, yeah, she's always had a plan to bring me in anyway. Okay. I think, all right. All right, we'll, we'll have to make do with what we have. So good afternoon. I have my hobby, my honey in the studio with me today. How, and uh, we've, we've lost quite a bit of time already. I'm just going to go straight to the questions. So I'm going to be asking you the questions. Um, but I need you to still remain on IG so that uh, the people on IG can see you. How did you know that I was the woman God wanted you to marry? Praise God. Um, I just want to first thank everyone um, that, you know, uh, that are on here, online, um, been following Possibilities Divine, and um, being, you know, giving positive feedback and even some critical ones. Uh, thank you so much uh, for doing such a great job to support and to, to always be with us. So I really don't know much about marriage, so I'm going to disappoint you <laughs> in that area. But um, what I know, uh, what I'll be sharing today will be my own experience, uh, my personal experience about, you know, my relationship with God and um, in my marriage and uh, with people. So hopefully that will bless, you know, and um, in fact, someone today. Um, talking about how you know, you know, knowing is um, in different level. Um, you, 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 can, you can know some, you know, true knowledge, you know, that's, that's what that uh, true, you know, acquisition of knowledge, but, I'm hoping that what we are talking about here goes beyond just um, recognizing the physical attribute of a lady uh, or recognizing the need to uh, be romantic or things like that. It goes beyond all that. So uh, um, in knowing and the picture you know my knowing started that way i mean i was just discovering how can this be i asking so many questions you know and getting some answers um maybe through my devotion getting other answers through people um through seminars so that kind of process was what i went through in actually saying this is the one that um 
God really has uh, kept for me. And and so um, in your own case, it may be just love at first sight. I don't know. But I mean, there, I know that definitely in really being assured that this is the person that God has given to you, you have to go through that process and God must always be in it. Thank you. You have to go through process. So you went through the process of, if I can recap, praying, God confirming it through his word. Yes. Thank you. Our relationship was long distanced. What assured you? Ah, thank you. Our relationship was long distanced. What assured you you had made the right decision given the um, challenges that could have um, been involved in a long distance relationship? Well, being a long distance relationship, and that was the first hurdle, you know, I, I questioned that a lot and just forgot to work out the way God actually did it. That was assuring to me that this is this is just meant to be. So um, you, you, I mean, as a young man, I had a lot of my own kind of distraction, maybe at work, in church, and you're going to see all this distraction, young men uh, and young ladies. You're going to see, especially if you're, you know, driving in your career, you're just setting out, you're going to see all this stuff that seem to be the actual thing but um you know as um they always say object may seem closer than they appear so um there are so many other things that you have so you have to really be into god and being interested in knowing how he speaks to you so god really be able it will be able to communicate that to you and that will be very personal it may very, you know, uh, my kind of knowing varies from, you know, yours. So it's it's something that we have to really be deep into God for for his guidance. Okay, thank you. And um, if I can just add a quick spiel to that, knowing is different from one person to another. And so you can't all of a sudden be hearing from God if you've never heard from him before. When it comes to the issue of marriage, that cannot be your first yeah. time of knowing how God speaks to you so if god has spoken to you about your career about choices some other choices if you've been guided before then then it'll be very easy for you to know okay this is god speaking to yeah. me and um like like my husband said it has to be different from person to person so how you will know how god speaks to you may be different from how the other person knows but it is very important and um uh, but you have to know so somebody say what are the different ways of knowing how god speaks to you okay I, I was going to actually expand on knowing, you know, because first, do you know yourself? You know, do you know God? Do you know how he speaks to you? Because when we're saying knowing, let's not be myopic as to just limit that to knowing who God wants to give to you or who God is planning. That to me is kind of selfish because in my own knowing, I discovered a lot of things about myself. You know, I discovered a lot of things about other people, you know, and I discovered a lot of things about what I shouldn't do, you know, to be able to have the will of God. For example, I mean, uh, at my work, you know, I, I, I didn't really set out to be, you know, to have something like a long distance relationship. I've always believed, OK, my wife may just walk into the door and uh, and then we'll connect so and i had this work where you know this job then where you know i connected with a lot of females beautiful female successful so my own kind of lens was kind of get towards you know people around me but that's not what god wanted for me so that's a kind of knowing i i discovered that you know um, through my experiences and through waiting on the law that hey this and many events happen so many things happen that really opened my eyes to that so there are levels of knowing but knowing god is something that supersedes everything 
knowing God supersedes everything. And, you know, like most of the things that we've heard, people know through dream, they'll have a dream. Some people would say, um, I was just um, going, I was just um, by the well. And <laughs> this is from the university days. Somebody will say I was by the well and I was uh, trying to draw water. And in that dream, a woman came and it was you and you <laughs> gave me water. But really and truly, it, it's important for us to understand that when God makes an impression on your heart, especially when you're trying to make a choice and the circumstances really do not agree yeah. with your reality and yeah. you're like, how is this going to possible? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. For some time, for most of the time, it may not make any sense. And um, it's important for you to be in, in the knowledge of God for you to be able to discover who he is. I have heard it said once that for you to find a good wife, you must be in God because you would only find that good wife in God. And the same goes for a woman. Thank you very much. And um, quickly, this is for young men who may be trusting God. As young as a young man, what qualities should you look out for in a lady you are considering for marriage? Okay, I, I saw that question. And um, it's funny, I mean, about a few days ago, I was actually streaming some video on on Facebook. And um, this popular comedian, uh, TV host came up. And um, a question like this was asked that, you know, what qualities should I look for? And because he's a Christian, he kind of understood that kind of question. He said, okay, you are asking all these things from a lady. What are you giving back? Hmm. You know, so what are you giving back? And that's the perspective. That's, that to me, um, you know, it, it's very deep. You know, when we say this quality, that quality, what quality do you bring to the table? As a man. As a man. Hmm. If you don't have such quality as you are asking for, you are either going to be intimidated by the quality you are asking for, or you are going to be buried by it. Hmm. You know, so what quality do you present to your future wife that this is the quality I'm looking for? And those qualities are not necessarily uh physical attributes you know in everything you know but essentially fit essentially your spiritual being essentially your character those are the things that i think people ask for the ideal right you ask for the ideal nobody will say i want um i want a mad woman you know uh, uh, to marry everybody will ask for that ideal so in asking for the ideal, you need to set goal for that ideal yourself. Mm -hmm. And then, as they say, likes attracts likes. So we women, young women, men, we have to always work on ourselves. So it's not somebody that brings in the good and the other one says, okay, yes, this is how I want it. Mm -hmm. What do you have? What do you have? When, when, um, um the prophet was asking the woman he asked what do you have at home what do you have so something you have to have something you know to bring to the table and that thing must be so quality that will really attract the other quality and the reason i'm saying this is that when you don't have it and you are supposed to be the head of the home you are supposed to be the leader sometimes men feel intimidated and when you feel intimidated and your woman is building and you are just like stagnating, mm. then, you know, issues come in, you know, inferiority comes in, everything like that comes in. So you really have to step up to the plate and say, I want to take care of, of you. And that will be that, that they, 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 um, the view that you go with, you know, the view to be able to take care of the woman that you're asking a hand in marriage. Hmm, thank you. So it's not enough to say, I want a woman who has an hourglass figure, who is smart, who is this, who is that, without actually asking yourself, do I have what it takes to handle a woman of this of this worth and quality? Because if you if you don't asset, make that assessment before you go into a relationship with somebody, even if you find a person like that, you're either going to be intimidated or buried in it. Thank you. Insecurity sets in when you when you find the, the perfect woman strong, beautiful, um, go-getter go and all that. But when you don't have what it takes to handle and manage that, it becomes a problem. Thank you very much. 
a few years ago, a few of our younger friends specifically told you, you are blessed uncle to have married auntie. The ladies out there are not wife materials. What would you say to a young man looking for a perfect mate? I think you kind of touched on it, but you know, I want you to answer. Yeah, um, again, that perspective may just be a perspective of just giving up that the ladies. And again, some of uh, that perspective also sound like somebody that is already intimidated. Hmm. So if you're saying, oh, the ladies out there, when you see the ladies out there and they are successful and they are hardworking, is that not a good enough quality? for a lady to have why should it be a man that will have that quality and the lady will have less quality so when you see all those things and you are still like oh maybe it's too proud maybe you are just assuming you know all those things ladies uh, uh young ladies should have such quality as will be able to support their home and their marriage and their husband and back as you know same with um the husband so there are materials out there that God will lead you to, but you also need to be able to look. When you go on the streets or when you desire that your, uh, uh, you go on the street and you see a scantily clad uh, lady, woman, young woman, and you are giving that woman a compliment that, oh, you really look sexy. Is that what you want in a woman? Maybe when you get to uh, where you're going, you see somebody like that, uh, like, okay, no, this person is not good. So, we, you, I mean, you may be part of contributing to um, uh, to the issue that you're talking about, like the, the ladies are not wife material because wife material to you may be somebody that would dress normally, will do everything. But if you go to a club and you are, you, you are chasing all those other women, thinking they are not somebody that you bring home, then you are contributing the, to that kind of problem. So a godly woman will be, um, will be there. Somebody that is, um, is ready to help and to support the home is out there. We are raising our own children now, and they are part of the system. So, and we are raising them to be good, to be godly to do everything with great value. So I will not subscribe to that saying that there are no women out there. There are wonderful, hard work. I know wonderful, hardworking women that are willing to, to help and to, to lead and to do as much as they are asked to do in the family. And they're out there. And they're waiting, they are praying too. For the right guy. Thank you very much. <laughs> and when this conversation took place a few years ago, I was amused. Every young man must realize that every woman is a wife material, if there's anything like that. But every woman goes through process become, before she becomes a good wife. So when you see a woman today that you too can say, this is an example of a virtuous woman of a, of a good wife, she has gone through process. And process takes place when you both agree and when you are working with, with, with each other, I remember the early days of our marriage. I was wondering, did I marry the wrong person? And I'm sure my husband was wondering the same thing because there was so much friction. But over time, we've been able to walk through our differences. And today, when people say, oh, you know, beautiful wife, perfect wife, I, I smile because I know that didn't happen in one day. So if you're young, you're out there, your wife will not come ready-made. You have to go through process. So you're looking for a wife, mat wife material. If God gives you a raw material, it is your responsibility to work on that raw material yeah. to make it a refined and finished product. That's right. Work has to be done on the material before it becomes a finished product. That's good. Thank you so much. And thank you for um, that uh, question. Marriage is said to be work. What makes it so? How do you handle finances? So that's two in one there. So we say marriage is work. What makes it work? Marriage is not only work. Marriage is hard and smart work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes, uh, it's work because, I mean, everything you do, think about it, everything we do in the system, in the world system today, uh, we go to school, we put in the work, Mm -hmm. and they give us certificate right mm -hmm. and, and then we say yeah we, we have graduated and all that but married you get the certificate and mm -hmm. then you start the work mm -hmm. you know so you start the work and what are the work 
people always forget that courtship is not knowing anything. It's just a connection, a, 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 a small period of connection in your marriage. But when you get married, you are going to see a whole lot. And you are going to be able to, like uh, my wife said, you have raw materials. You are going to be seeing all these raw materials coming out, <laughs> you know. And then how do you develop it? How do you nurture it? How do you... Um, communicate, you know, to really go on the same path? What, uh, how will the process of pruning happen? You know, pruning in old habits, your habits, our habit, you know, and um, how do you do all those things even along with maybe having babies and all that? So there's a lot of things that both of you will learn and that is the work, you know? It's the education, is the uh, being able to sit back and just you know um, appraise yourself, you know, and 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 your wife. Many people, I mean, um, that I've seen that have had issues in marriage, they are so fixated on you know the other person, mm. you know, as the problem. She didn't do this. I was talking to a friend about the relationship with, um, you know, the wife. And uh, for over like two hours that we were on the phone and she was just saying she didn't do this. She didn't do that. And I asked one question and she didn't, he didn't allow me to ask this question, but I pushed it in. I said, what is one thing that you wish you could have done right in all this? And he he couldn't really tell me. He went back to the old ways of deflecting of, you know, he she didn't, didn't do this. So obviously that guy has not done his own work, mm -hmm. you know, his own growing up, his own learning, his own education, his own understanding, his own, you know, being able to look the other way, even when it hurts you most, you know, that's work. Being able to sacrifice, being able to, if you think just coming in, providing money, and um, maybe occasional sex and all that, that's work? No. But you need to do more. You need to be able to understand your marriage. You need to be able to understand your family dynamics. There have been times that I told my wife, we are going to really go through these four years this way. And she was wondering, how? I said, you're going to do your thing. You're not going to wait for me. I will do my own thing and we're going to really make it. And at the end of the day, we, we did it. And people are asking us, how did you make it? So we didn't really have to fight over it, but the vision had to come from somebody and somebody will have to be able to support it and say, okay, I'll stick everything that comes with it. So that's the work in it. Growing up, like, um, my sister said, yes, you have to really grow up uh, um, because, I mean, courtship is not marriage. So, um, but you will have to develop real friendship, you know. Mm -hmm. That courtship will have to transform to friendship, you know, because in friendship, you can just go for a walk. You don't have to go to a restaurant. You don't have to go to a movie. You have to really just be able to talk with each other and grow in that. Um, I have quite a number of questions and um, I'm hoping to get as much out of you from this conversation as possible. What would you say about finances? How do you handle finances? Finances will have to really depend on a whole lot of things. I mean, who is a better finance, uh, who will be the better manager, money manager, or uh, who is better at figures? You have to be able to figure all that out. Is it the woman? Is it the man? Uh, for me, I'm a planner. I like to plan. You know, I just like to plan. And, and uh, you know, I love my wife to be able to say, okay, manage this, take this. But I don't think it's that thing. I've grown to understand that that's not you know, happy. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I, 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 and I used to be very angry about it, you know can't you just do this but for me in planning 
I will make sure I cross all the T's. I want to be able to do all those things. And if she's not able to do that, well, maybe that's not her forte. So uh, that is something that we have to look for in finances. So uh, who is better at doing it? And uh, what will be your, you know, your, your agreement, you know, as to how your finances are managed? So whoever is the better manager, should be responsible for finances right and i and i understand that because um sometimes people feel okay i'm the man i should be in charge but if you are if you are spendthrift you won't benefit to the relationship the same goes for a woman if a woman feels money is to be spent then it will be difficult for you to talk about you know accounting and all that however th there's always this issue of should we have a joint account should we have an um, um, individual account What's your, what's your take on that? And what has worked for you in your own relationship? To me, all those things um, tend to be a little redundant because, I mean, practically, you will have to have a joint account and you have to have a, um, separate, a account. separate account. I mean, that's the way the world works now. So uh, whatever you use that for, whatever um, you are using all this account for, like I said, somebody will have to really be able to oversee how your family finances are going. So, and who is that person? Who is that is there transparency in it? And is there access to it? So if there's uh, transparency, if there's access, then that's that's what you need, you know, because if there's no trust and you are, you know, you're saying there's an account, a Swiss uh, bank account somewhere that you don't want anybody to know, then I mean that's outside that marriage, that's not something that you man manage within the marriage but everything that you have in the marriage both of you have to really be transparent about it okay thank you has your role changed or has your role or relationship changed since marriage uh, yes yes roles do change i mean husband wife father coach um um you know friend you know i, I mean your roles change between both of you, you know, um, you can transform between, or you can actually grow, grow from being a husband to being a friend, um, to being, you know, a father, you know, to being, you know, um, a, a good coach. I mean, and when I say coach, that's another thing that I want um, young men to be able to uh, really embrace. We don't, um, we don't, um, seek the opportunity to be able to lead uh, our wives or our partners. Or, that opportunity is always there. They will not do things right, just like we don't always do things right. But we need that opportunity to be able to train, to be able to coach them, to be able to say, if you do this, to be able to recognize their talent and say, if you do this, I guarantee you, you can. And to be able to do even reward and recognition for them to, you know, to be encouraged to achieve their potentials. And, and that is our role. I mean, that could be a role of um, the woman too, depending on who is lacking in what. So roles do change. I mean, my role to my children now is not just uh, being a father, but also being a counselor, being, you know, somebody right. that is... Um, you know, okay. but generally I have uh, this role as being the jester, you know, in the house too. So, <laughs> yes, you also you also serve as a pastor, as a priest. Yes, you know, and uh, again, when we are talking about the different roles, there are times when, depending on the age of your children, there we we were brought up believing that it's the woman's role to take care of the children, to sweep, to clean, and all that. For people who are starting out in marriage, that maybe your marriage is less than five years, you will discover that the man has to be so many other things. There are days he would have to be the nanny, there are days he has to be the cook, there are other days he has to be a cleaner, and it does not take away from who he really is. And I understand. And uh, okay, yeah. Somebody says a coach and not negative critic. My husband is is the he criticizes me most, but it's usually constructive. He is the one who believes in me. Molara, you can take on the world. You can do anything. He will nudge me, push me forward, and all that. But he is my he, I fear him most because when I come up with an idea, you must make make sure that the idea makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, I have to deal with him. So he is uh, he's a very positive influence. And uh, like I said. 
as a young man, that, that is your place. That is what God expects you to be to your wife, not just only criticizing her, but if there's going to be any criticism, it has to be positive. Um, In-laws, you're from a big family, and so am I. How have you prevented the wife-mother-in-law drama, and how do you relate with your own mother-in-law? Well, in-laws, I mean, that's cultural, right? I mean, that's something that within our own culture, we have to understand how to deal with our family, um, our nuclear, our extended family. So um, as long as we understand that and we're not too sentimental about it, because your goal as a unit, you have to really put it forward. And that is something that is important mm -hmm. as a family unit. What do I want for my family? And because many people will be dictating so many things to you because they are your senior brothers or your uncle or your auntie, things like that. Everybody must understand that your family is very, is like the, the, the primary, you know, um, focus. And you have to be able to go to back and say, this is what I want for my family. You don't even have to mention it. You only just have to put safeguard in place to make sure that that is what your family achieves. For example, I mean, uh, when we first married, I told my wife that uh, I'll prepare her that we're going to a place now and this is what you should expect. And this is how I want you to behave there. So. If you don't behave there, then you are on your own. But this is how I want you. Once you do that, leave the rest to me. And that's how we are able to manage, you know. Uh, In-laws are an essential part of our life. And uh, they are also our family because we marry into family, right? So um, I don't know of any experience that my wife, you can say that my wife has that is negative concerning you know, uh, my parents, and I don't have the same concerning, uh, you know, her parents. As a matter of fact, you know, I see a parent as my parents now. So, uh, and that's how it is. It's always been for me. So I really don't, I can't speak to any other one, but that's, that's how it's always been to me. If I can add to that comment, my husband made it very, very clear when we we're getting married that, you know, my parent, my not his parents, because I mean there was no there was no reason there was no there was no place for me disrespecting or having any issue with his parents because automatically I accepted his parents as my parents and he did mine as well. But my husband's parents are like all oh, very older people. His dad was one three when I met him, so his mom was in her seventies when I met him. So they 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 are older people and so loving wonderful people but i had to deal with his you know siblings younger siblings cousins and all that but my husband drew the line and he told me respect in our family this is what it looks like and he told us his um his cousins and relations this is what respect is so he set solid boundaries so that i couldn't disrespect and they could not disrespect me in any way and i believe that's the role of a man uh, that's one way you prevent unnecessary drama in your family from your nuclear, between your nuclear and your extended family, especially between your wife and either your siblings, your cousins and any other person. So when you don't set clear boundaries, then you set the woman up for failure. Uh, but when the boundaries are clear, then everybody knows that I don't bypass this. I don't trespass along this line. Thank you very much. And, um, Friends sometimes influence marriage relationships. How much influence have your friends had on your marriage? Well, I I I, I will say I have few friends, you know, um, but they're very close to me, and um, they've been very positive. You know, um, looking for um, a wife, they've been there, you know, to pray with me mm -hmm. and to really counsel me because many of them married before I even got to that place. So um they they will you know they they encourage me all the way so and if you leave i mean if you're a christian and you you are not in the world let's say you're not one leg in one leg because when i was working i mean that leo was always there i i worked in a i mean when i was working um as an advertising person 
um, you you worked in a an environment that had all this glamour, you know, um, around it. And uh, if you actually are trapped in that, you you may have or you may continue to uh, be lured into something like that. But I have few friends that uh, shared, you know, um, their depth of wisdom oh. and uh, counsel with me. Thank you. Quickly, because I'm, I look at that time is really running far away from us. What is respect? What does respect mean to you as a husband? Um, respect is a big thing mm -hmm. to me. and um, But respect is something I have to give first. You know, and when I give it, I'm hoping that, I mean, you don't do anything that negates what I've given, you know, and, and that to me is respect. So um, respect is not, you know, the the usual or oh, um, praise singing of somebody without really, you know, doing those things that they want. I mean, I really want to be listened to, mm -hmm. and I really want to um, be considered in every way. Mm. Be listened man, to, be considered and, in every way. A, mm. a, a manner that uh, the decision is made in mm -hmm. the house. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, I'm, if my wife went in to do something, you know, and did not tell me, that's disrespect to me, okay. you know. And uh, I, I won't go and do the same thing, no matter how small, you know, it is without really saying, you know, sometimes we don't need that approval. It's not that we need approval, but we just need to be open. So respect is openness. And uh, respect is also to really be concerned about the other person, hmm. the, the the needs of the other person, you know. And, and to me, that's... Uh, that's that's respect thank you so when you say the need of the other person what what needs specifically are you talking about i've learned to um if if you if your wife is talking to you and you're like this thing that you're saying doesn't really matter you know to you it doesn't matter because i mean you may not take it as something but i have to really attach the respect to it that what she wants matters to her you know that's respect that's to me i have to it doesn't really matter to me but i have to really respect that i have to really accept that okay is this what you want okay we'll do it you don't care whether it's done or not but accepting that and being able to consider it and not just discard it is respect great we're going to move quickly to faith and I'm going to have to cut my questions short on that. How has your faith shaped, shaped your marriage? Um, like you mentioned, I mean, we I come from a very large family. And one of the things that um, I'd hoped for is to be able to just have a wife and children. And I believe um, to a large extent, uh, my faith has really, you know, done, uh, you know, really... Uh, provided that roadmap, you know, to be able to have that. And also to be humble, you know, in, in marriage is something that you really need God, you know. I, I mean, sometimes ego take over, you mm -hmm. know, and so many other things, you know, that you get angry about or you disrespect each other about. There are guidelines in the word of God how to deal with it. So, and that is something that we, we, we really, um, we really have to consider. And that's what I've, I've been considering even through my faith. Beautiful. Um, as a man, how do you manage strength in a woman? Strength. Um. Okay, let me just put it this way. I mean, strength in the sense that uh, maybe qualities, right? That's right, that's right? Qualities and more. Like I said before, you as a man will always have to look through the person God gave you, see those good quality, mm -hmm. being able to harness it, you know, mm -hmm. and encouraging it shaping it up, knowing, I mean, putting yourself in the place of a coach. You know, um, a coach 
in the life of a player uh, of a player is very very important coaches probably don't earn as much as their players you know the nba and all the all the rest of it mm -hmm. but they are very very important in the decision they make mm -hmm. in how they shape you know every I, I watched this um, video on all of fame induction mm -hmm. and the practice will always be bring somebody or two or three that you know has really helped you in the journey mm -hmm. to become this great. And I've never seen anybody out of all those people that have been inducted bring somebody that is not a coach. Mm -hmm. They will always either bring their secondary school, high school coach, or NBA coach or coaches, you know, because they have that much influence. And that is a place of managing strength to be able to coach that potential. Because mm -hmm. um, strength is not strength until it's, it's really blossomed. It's really manifested into something very positive. So you can see the potential. And then you bring it out, you know, to be a, a good quality. And then you'll be behind it to say, you know what, I coached you to do that. And that's 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 much more rewarding than to be jealous. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to add this question. Uh, we have a ministry, but your wife, your wife is the face of that ministry. She's the one who features in most things. And um, we hardly, I, I, I would say this is about the first time we're sitting together, featuring together. Why is that so? Because that's um, that's a role. I mean, um, when we started, it I, I I was very clear, and um, my, I was the one that actually you know I lighted. These are the things we're going to be doing in the next. And she didn't know how to figure it out. She really couldn't do anything. And I said, you know what? You're going through all these things. This is what we are going to be doing. So. And I know you have passion for it, so you're going to be the face of it. But leave the planning, leave the strategy, leave whatever to me. So um, for me, I'm the, uh, how do they call it? The, uh, I'm the, the office guy. <laughs> the background. Yeah, so, yeah, and which is my place, really. I mean, um, that's where I'm comfortable. You know, I, I wouldn't be able to... Um, come on ig every day or every <laughs> uh, yeah i prefer writing and i prefer doing um you know a lot of planning like i said you know a lot of and i critique a lot of things you know so um things are really not perfect to me even when they seem perfect but um but that's what i that's what i do good so um Thank you. It's important for me to ask you that question because sometimes people wonder, why is it that you're the only one who's out there talking and all that? In a marriage relationship, when you understand each person's strength, like my husband said, if you get him to sit on, on, on this thing for more than an hour now, he gets uncomfortable. But meanwhile, for some of us, we can come here two, three, four, five times in a day with different things. And so in a marriage relationship, understand your role understand your strength and when each party understands strength and weaknesses there will be no reason to be in competition there'll be no reason to for uh, for the one party to look for ways of um outshining the other because there really isn't any need for that everybody has their own distinct role wow um it's 12 50 life is a school that you never graduate from how has your past experiences prepared you for marriage quickly Okay, past experiences. Um, there, there are lots of things that um, I've done in life too that really um, have really impacted how I see marriage. For example, I mean, um, the way I went to school, the way I really, you know, learned to endure, you know, um, going to school and all those things, when you see it in marriage, to me it doesn't really um they're not as as big you know as sometimes it seemed big with my wife because i mean i know the way she was brought up was different from the way 
I was brought up. So, and I will always tell, you know, our own pain tolerance is <laughs> very low. Mine is so high. So, I mean, we have to balance all these things. And so to me, that really gave me the strength to be the calming factor, you know, in my family, to be the one that uh, I don't really freak out as such, you know, even when um, the other ones are going the other way. So, and that is because of <laughs> what I've seen in life, you know, how I've really grown up. I mean, and what, um, and, and how grateful I am for everything that, um, you know, has happened to me. Hmm. The next thing I'm going to add to it, you seem very content about life. How do you achieve contentment? If I can add a, um, a quick story, I remember a few years into marriage, most of our friends were buying houses and I was just so like, you know, we're living in an apartment building and I was tired of that apartment building. And I said, darling, what are we going to do? You said, oh, I cannot afford a house at this time. So there's nothing I can do. We'll just be okay here. And so, I mean, and I said, I can't be okay. We have to do something about it. So, and I see you play that out in every aspect of life. You're very content. You're, you're not worried about what's going on in, in somebody else's life. How do you achieve that? And how? what would you suggest to other young men who seem to be looking at the Joneses? Um, contentment is something that is so, that you have to really find peace doing. You know, it's not something that, because I mean, if you attach importance to so many other things, not that you're not ambitious, not that you cannot strive to be there, but you have to always be content with every position and every opportunity that God has given you. Hmm. And how do you now go from that place to the next level? Now, if you start comparing your own pace with the pace of the person that is jogging beside you, you may not be content with the way you're moving. But that's really not how God wants you to move. Maybe God wants you to move at uh, 10 kilometers an hour and the other person is going at, um, you know, um, 50 kilometers an hour. I mean, you're not going to the same place. You're not going to land in the same place. So yeah. that is, to me, that's how I see things. I mean, you are going to a destination. Everybody is heading somewhere. But you have to be really... Uh, in tune with how God is leading you there. And that's, that's to me is contentment. You have to be in tune with how God is leading you to where he is leading you to. Amazing. Um, because of my time, I think I have only about five more minutes. You are a child of old age. Your parents didn't have you in their prime, yet you're quite contemporary in your outlook about life. Am I correct to say this is a product of maturity? <laughs> yes or no? Uh, <laughs> yes or no? I don't, I don't know. I don't know, really. Okay. I mean, I... Uh, child of old age, you wouldn't know how you will grow up. Mm -hmm. even, even, uh, but I do know something, though. I do know that when you, the way I, I grew up, you know, among my father's friend and everything, I really gleaned on a lot of wisdom, you know, in the way. And, you know, I'm, as in Yoruba culture, there are lots of proverbs that they will. And I, I say some of these things to you to really buttress certain things. And that to me, I, I I glean on a lot of wisdom, you know, just sitting around the table, being sent an errand and all that, and they'll gather and they'll be talking. Hmm. And that's something that, um, you know, was very, is very precious. How do you acquire maturity? Maturity has been defined as being able to handle proximity without familiarity. How do you acquire maturity? Maturity. Uh, maturity is, you know, it's relative. And I will say that, you know, it's not something you actually get to. Mm -hmm. It's not a destination. It's a process. You know, you mature. You continue to like you. And it's a process of time. You mm -hmm. know, it's a process of time. How you learn from your experience to do and not to do certain things. Hmm will show how mature you are, mm -hmm. how you learn from your experience to handle and not to handle certain situations mm -hmm. will show how mature you are. But that doesn't mean that, you know, learning that will make you mature in, in, in quote. I mean, you may have, you may be faced with even a level of challenge mm -hmm. that you also need to learn from. And that's why I say maturity is a process. 
Maturity is a process. Thank you. Insecurity, I have seen that play a very critical role in most marriages and a lot of marriages have um, problems just because the man especially is insecure. Because if a woman is insecure, you can encourage her and all that. But if a man who is supposed to be the head, the leader is insecure, that is a major problem. Um, and most of the time it's as a result of maybe the woman's drive, her achievement, her pedigree, finances, and so on. How can a man get over insecurity in marriage? Know your place. Um, know God. And improve yourself. You know, I we, we, we mentioned it earlier. A man that wants a woman who has something that brings to the table. If that thing is not enough, you... As a result of maybe your wife overachieving, you got to tell yourself, I need to step up, or I need to do something, or where do I fit? What is my best, you know, uh, strength here? Do you understand it? And you will look for that, and you go there, and you are going to be comfortable with that, you know. But if you're not comfortable with that, if you're actually just seeing the end goal, um, my wife bought um, this car today. I'm going to make sure I buy something bigger, you know. Um, that is not a very good place to be, you know. Um, like I said, some, some of us, especially men, will have to be a coach to our wife, you know. And even doing that alone puts you in control, you know, of so many things. And if you're not able to um, see it as that one, then maybe you need to actually seek help. Okay. In five seconds, can you just give us a parting charge? Because we'll be shutting down in, part in two seconds. In two seconds, love yourself, love your family. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You're still in Facebook. Uh, yeah, I mean, love God, love yourself, love your family. And your own goal is, um, like I said, seek the ideal. And what's the ideal for you? What's that ideal for you? If you continue working on it, you'll get there. And there is no perfect situation, as you can see, even in coronavirus situation now, <laughs> there's no perfect thing anywhere. But you always have to make the best, the most of what, um, what God has put you um, in charge of. And uh, God will help in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, yeah, we were doing the, the parting chat when that disconnected. So do you want to go over that quickly? Yeah, like I was saying that uh, love God, love yourself and be very focused on what you want as an ideal for your family. And with you being open to that change, because we talked about growth, with you being open to all that change, with you being open to all the uh, needs of the family and with you being open to accept those challenges, God will back you up. Amen. Thank you so very much for coming. I appreciate you and I do not take this for granted. I hope one or two people would have been able to benefit from the nuggets that you have shared. So God bless you. And um, I hope anytime we call on you, you'll be, you will be quick yeah, to respond again. Yeah, your honorarium has to be bigger. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining us today. The Lord bless you and have a good one. Bye now. Thank you. Oh, my word. Yeah. Little, little more.